All right, so we'll get started. So my name is Vikas Jain, um, and with me is uh, Andrew Hornsby. We both are from the product management team of uh, VMware Workspace ONE. So today we are going to talk about how to secure your Office 365 deployment using Workspace ONE. Um, we have certain these goals laid out for today, but if you have any uh, specific questions, feel free to shout out. It's a small group, so we can make it a little bit uh, interactive experience. So um, we'll cover what is Workspace ONE, Office 365 uh, identity models, conditional access for uh, both the modern authentication and the legacy clients, uh, mobile email management, how you do that with Workspace ONE, and uh, ecosystem, how if you have invested in other products, how does that come together, as well as enabling your enterprise for Office 365 deployment in a phased approach. Okay. So before I uh, get into uh, some of the details, um, how many of you have actually are using uh, Office 365 today in your enterprises? Okay. And, uh, you know, a couple of you who have not showed the hands, are you considering Office 365? What phase are you in the deployment investigation? Okay, cool. All right, so Workspace ONE, um, you will see is a, a VMware product for providing a consumer simple yet enterprise secure digital workspace. Now what that mean? Means that all your workforce can come to a single place to launch any type of application, whether it's your web application, a native application that you have to download on your mobile device, or uh, launching a remote app like Citrix or Horizon. Also, it acts as your um, management agent as well. So you don't have to ask your users to download yet another thing for management. They go to they launch an app to get access, but also get managed um, uh, for pro making sure that you have app security. So at a high level, this is the architecture. Um, you see that one box over here called UEM services. This is what is providing the enterprise mobility management. Now we have termed it as UEM because VMware is also doing the um, Windows 10 management. So we are moving up into the desktop management and hence that's the UEM, Unified Endpoint Management. Then there is a layer called Identity Services that provides the glue for getting all the apps into a single workspace um, and those applications could be federated by existing identity providers like ADFS, Ping, Federate, Okta, um, doesn't matter. The goal here is to make sure that people don't, don't have to know what is the plumbing behind the scenes. They get one place for all types of apps. And then if customers, uh, if, if your developers, IT developers are developing some apps like remote, you know, room locator app or some app for your business needs, then we also provide an SDK that can help with your DLP controls, remote wipe of data, encryption of your data into your apps, et cetera. And finally, um, everything is API based, so you can also interact with the platform over the APIs. You don't have to always use um, our user interface. Okay. So since this topic is about Office 365, let's talk about what are the aspects we take care of. So A, authentication into different types of clients. We'll talk about that and how we provide no password experience in certain scenarios. A modern MFA-based um, authentication, which is used uh, using the push notification or push MFA. Conditional access that makes sure that access is only provided to approved devices and approved users under right conditions and email, which is the centerpiece of Office 365 program, 
apart from Skype and others, all email is the main thing. So what are the things that you do um, with Workspace One Data? DLP, um, I have a section around how you can do copy-paste controls and things like that for applications, client applications that are connected to Office 365. And finally, driving adoption into the enterprise. How do you start small? What is the phased approach of getting your Office 365 deployment from start to finish? So first, it's very important to understand the different identity models that Office 365 provides today. It provides a cloud identity model where all identities are in the cloud only, in Azure AD. There is no presence of the identity into on-prem Active Directory. So that's what the cloud identity is. Then you have the synchronized identity where you're synchronizing your Active Directory users and groups into Azure AD, but also the password so that the users can directly access Office 365 um, through Azure AD. And finally, the federated identity where uh, the Office 365 which is powered by Azure AD is federating to an external identity provider. And we'll focus on the third one um, on how with the federated identity model, Workspace One provides value. So in this case, using the WS Federation protocol, both the passive flow and the active flow, all requests come to Workspace One for authentication. And when we authenticate, we not only just authenticate the user, we also make sure that the device ID authentication is done as well. So both user ID and device ID authentication is done. So in order to set up the federation, um, there's a free package um, catalog link. So you go through a workflow of how you want to set up the federation you provide the WSFED details here, and then you also provide your um, Azure Office 365 registered domain, set it as your tenant and the e issuer, as well as set up your UPN and immutable ID properties. So once you have all these four properties set, then the uh, workspace one is able to talk to Office 365 or Azure AD uh, that's powering Office 365. Okay, next let's look at how the modern authentication flow works uh, for the passive profile. So it uses the WS Federation passive profile. Now, um, Office 365 also supports the SAML, but we do not recommend clients to use that mechanism because that doesn't provide the full functionality. It's very much, if you are only concerned about Outlook web access, only then you use SAML. Otherwise, never ever configure that part of the protocol. Use the WS Federation, which is full featured. So here, um, request goes to Office 365 by the user who's trying to access, gets redirected to Workspace One for authentication, we send a WS Fed um, token to Office, and then Office 365, you know, using that assertion, logs the user in, sends the OAuth to uh, access token and refresh token to the client application, and then client application makes the API call with the access token to get all the data like email or Skype, Word, Excel, etc. Etc. Now, this is how the modern authentication works, but is modern authentication available for all types of client applications that's provided by Microsoft? So it depends. And you can see there is a Microsoft link at the bottom. If you bookmark it, you'll see it's getting updated as there are clients get updated to support this new modern authentication flow. But at the moment, as you can see, the 2016 Office clients, Office Suite, um, most of them on Windows, on um, Mac, 
support modern authentication. Skype for business, um, in most cases it's there. Um, Outlook, you, as you can see on Windows Phone, it's coming soon, but everywhere, everywhere on all other platforms it supports modern authentication um, and things like that. Now, on the back end, if you see, modern authentication is not on by default. So for example, um, the Skype for Business, you have to turn it on if you want to leverage the modern authentication. Otherwise, you get the legacy authentication where you're presented with a username and password box by the client. Or if you take the case of Office 2013, you have to make, you have to make sure that um, there's some registry settings that you have to turn on, only then you get modern auth. So it's very important to understand what your landscape is, what your users are using, what you have rolled into your org organization, what kind of clients, and then decide how you want to apply policies. Now, I talked about Workspace One providing passwordless authentication for modern authentication clients. And the way it works is, because Workspace One is powered by AWatch, AWatch is pushing the security profile onto the device, and in the security profile is present a certificate that is transported to the backend using different variety of mechanisms that is proprietary to us. So for example, in the case of iOS, we use Kerberos to transport that certificate to the backend. In the case of Android, we use a tunneling mechanism to transport it. So we have a device specific way of providing this particular user uh, interface to provide a passwordless experience when users are accessing their uh, Office 365 content from their clients, client machines or client devices. So let's look at what it means um, to provide conditional access for modern authentication. Now, Workspace One provides conditional access based on who the user is, various attributes of the user, what kind of device they are coming in from, is it a managed device, unmanaged device, is it a jailbroken device, compliant or not, what application they are accessing and what location they are coming in from, whether they are coming in from a corporate network or are outside the corporate network. So, specific to Office 365, as you can see, if I'm launching my Outlook web access from browser, you can apply all the conditional access rules. If you am launching my Outlook app or my Skype for business app from my um, devices that support modern authentication, again, I can get conditional access. Or if I'm using the native email client that only supports the active sync, which does not support modern authentication, it supports the legacy auth, which means only user ID password, we can provide conditional access there too, and we'll, we'll see what it, a demo of it. So this is one example of conditional access that most of our customers are using, which is they want to make sure that access to Office 365 is only allowed from managed and compliant devices. So if I download an uh, Outlook app on my BYO unmanaged device, how can I block access? Unless, and then we coach, we make sure that the access is just not blocked, the user knows how to get access. So we take the user into a journey from there to get their device enrolled and finally get access. So with that, let's, it in action uh, we'll do a live demo here all right yeah so we're gonna do a live demo uh, we're also gonna do this demo on iOS 11 uh, which is a little risky I admit uh, I know that many of you have probably heard of some of the challenges coming with iOS 11 um, we just wanted to demonstrate uh, at least uh, on our ship no worries for the moment um, and before I kick everything off I want to mention that everything you're gonna see for this office 365 suite is not reliant on any kind of point solution, SDK, app wrapping, uh, any code changes we've asked them to make, 
Um, and it, in fact, does not rely on uh, the app op, although app op is always a bonus. Um, so just keep in mind, we're really focusing on Office 365 for this session, but the same framework, the same flow you're gonna see is extensible to any app that supports any of the, one of the Federation protocols that we've done today. So we're starting here with this device. Prove it to you, really iOS 11. <laughs> and we're starting with the Outlook application. So I've preloaded both Outlook and our workspace. You'll notice workspace is not signed in. This device is not enrolled in EMM. And what I've done as an end user is I've gone out and downloaded the Outlook application from the store. And this is what users do, right? They're not accustomed to an enterprise workspace being the only way to go and access something. So an uninformed user just probably trying to do their best is gonna go out to the store and they're gonna get Outlook. And then they're gonna do something like this. They're gonna put in their email address for auto discovery. And they're gonna try to sign in. So because we're the federation provider through the workflow that Vikas showed, we have the ability to intercept that request and make a decision. So because we have this deep integration with EMM and we can look for a specific signature of an enrolled device, and the policy for this particular application says the device does need to be EMM managed and all of these various compliance policies and protections need to be leveraged to consider it to, to be secure, these things are not there. So we're gonna throw up this access denied message. Um, this can actually be in our product just customized to whatever you want it to be. Um, this one's very simple, but typically you want to sort of explain why to your users. Why am I being blocked? Um, and in fact, access denied may not even be too strong, just you're going about this the wrong way. Let's, let's help you go about this the right way. So you'll see there's also a link here as well. Um, we're not going to use this because we already have the app preloaded, but what this can do is actually send you out directly into the App Store, so you'll see a swizzle into the App Store app, directly to Workspace ONE. So this gives you a, an easy way to go and get Workspace ONE and start doing things, you know, what we would consider to be the right way. <clears throat> let's go ahead and exit out of that authentication. Um, so let's do things the right way. Let's pretend we went and downloaded the Workspace ONE app and that you guys didn't have to wait for me to do that in real time. We're gonna sign in. So similar deal, we're gonna use our auto discovery email address and I'm gonna go ahead and punch in some credentials. So there, we're signed in. And keep in mind, this is something that we really only want to do once. All we're really trying to do is get access to Outlook. We just tried to sign in, now we've been asked to sign in uh, the official way to the company portal. So what we don't want to have to ask users to do is to sign in a second time. So let's go ahead and refresh, make sure our apps are showing up here. Uh, what we're waiting for, Wi-Fi willing, is uh, our Outlook application is going to show up here as well. Give it just a minute. So what's happening behind the scenes is um, based on the user entitlement, the Outlook app um, will show up. And again, you can decide which users get what kind of apps. So whether a user gets their Outlook app on Android, iOS, uh, what kind of Android devices is something that you can configure in AWatch console. Just quick show of hands, um, how many of you have AWatch uh, in your orga organization already deployed? Yeah. Are you um, in the journey of um, moving into Workspace ONE or at the moment just uh, looking at it? Right, so a uh, question is when the email address was put into the Outlook app, did it redirect to Workspace ONE as an IDP to authenticate? Yes, so remember we had set up a WS Federation between um, Office 365 and Workspace ONE, and so all requests 
for authentication that goes to office get redirected to workspace one. Now, if you already have ping, the way it will work is it will go to ping and then ping can again redirect to workspace one for authentication. So you would chain the IDPs together from Office 365 to ping to workspace one. One area where it doesn't work is the active flow or the legacy clients because in that flow, there is a SOAP backend SOAP message that goes from Office to ping and ping doesn't have the functionality to take that SOAP message and send it again to workspace one. So, now as I said, it depends on the different types of clients. Active Sync does not support the modern authentication. So you still have to support, if you have a use case to support the native email clients, then you would have to consider that use case of how to support active flow in your deployment. Yeah, Excel, Word, 2016, all of them support modern auth and the flow of going from Office to Ping to Workspace One works perfectly well. And that same flow works for other applications like Salesforce, Workday, et cetera as well. So. Yeah, so we're just, we're showing you Outlook now, which just happens to be, it, it's about the only modern auth email client available right now, but the same flow that we're gonna show works for all of the other modern auth clients, so Skype for Business, uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, et cetera. Uh, and then there's a second classification of clients that you mentioned, these active flow clients, the traditional EAS, um, and we support those as well, and the flow looks very similar. There's a different technology stack on the back end that helps us achieve that, uh, a more, you might call it a legacy EMF way of doing things, um, which we're gonna go through as well. Um, No, so we actually, um, we're gonna switch to the video. Uh, iOS 11 may have been a little ambitious, I'll admit, um, but we've seen the first half. We'll switch to the video, show the second half. What you're seeing here is we're actually deploying Office in a few different ways in this particular environment. Uh, this is a test environment that we use a lot. Um, we're showing that we can deliver virtualized versions of applications as well. Um, so one of the strategies for solving DLP, if you're really concerned that users might download files from Office 365 to local machines, one of the things you can do is set up either very stringent authentication on normal web browsers or block them entirely and actually allow access through a virtualized machine which kind of containerizes everything. So if you're at you know, grandma's house on the weekend and you access your email client, forget to sign out or you downloaded something, we can kind of work around that. So let's switch to the video just to look at the end of it. Yeah, so we have... Uh So, good, perfect. So this is what we would have seen. Um, this is the uh, Office 365 Outlook native application. Wow, that's fast. And uh, what we did was when we clicked on it, <clears throat> there was a little lock icon there. What that lock means is that we're just currently signed in to the company workspace, but there are no additional security measures leveraged on the device itself. Um, at this point, we're sort of acting like a normal identity portal with the addition of the ability to provision native applications as well. But what we're not doing is using EMM to potentially control things like uh, open end controls, screenshot, et cetera. Um, this device could be uh, you know, non-compliant in a variety of ways we wouldn't know. So for this particular app, um, once again, the user's still just trying to get Outlook, so they click on Outlook and we say, essentially there's one more thing you've gotta do, and it's this workspace services profile. For any of you guys that are real uh, EMM gurus, this is um, the normal uh, EMM profile that you would be deploying. Um, we limit the permissions somewhat depending on your environment configuration, uh, best practice for privacy, uh, and there's a privacy page that we're not including here that will inform users as to exactly what they're opting into in order to get access to their app. Um, but as we continue, this will look really familiar to anyone who's done iOS EMM enrollment before. We're gonna install the profile, and then when we're done, we're gonna sent, be sent right back to Workspace ONE. And what you'll notice is that Workspace ONE, again, remembers what we were doing. There's a common thread that, again, I'm just a user who wanted to get access to Outlook, didn't know how to do it, 
and I'm being shown the right way. So there's the, the final piece of the installation. Okay, I'd, I'd like to use Outlook. I'm still trying to get Outlook. Um, we'll reload the catalog. And for this particular demo, just to kind of drive home this no SDK, no app wrapping, broken record story, um, we're gonna go ahead and download one extra app and just show that the experience is consistent. So I believe in this case we're gonna get Salesforce, yes. And then we'll head back to the home screen once this is done and see what the experience looks like. So remember, we're now on a managed device. Everything is being uh, as tightly or loosely managed as the EMM wants it to be. And one of the things that we're gonna check as we go through uh, the single sign-on process, it's gonna look very simple, very nothing's happening to the end user, but there's a lot going on in the back end. And while that's downloading, I'll try to go through it. So we're doing a, a very unique method of certificate transport uh, per platform. This is where whether or not the application is using the modern app auth standards, it works either way. We found a way to integrate with the OS and rather whether you're using WK WebView or the more, more modern Safari View controller or the Android equivalent, certificate auth always works. And what the certificate does is it's wrapped by an EMM signature so it's not portable. You can't put it on another device and do simple challenge response. That won't work. And it also carries user data and device data. And that's how we're gonna tell that this device is now enrolled. So let's open Outlook. There's our old access denied page, so let's kill it and we'll start over. Or there's a simple back button that I didn't use. Um, <laughs> so let's get started and for the last time, we'll put in our email address and remember that we just put in our credentials. Uh, we really don't want users to have to do that again. Um, so that's why we've put all this work into this mobile single sign-on framework. Um, once we correctly type in the email address, uh, really all you're gonna see is a workspace one is signing you in. Uh, similar branding to the app so they know that it's this common thread um, that's authenticating them. Quick spinning box and we're done, that's it. Um, and it works the same again for any one of those Office applications where Modern Auth is enabled and we'll talk through the strategies for um, native email or any applications that are, have not been brought up to speed yet. <clears throat> and just to prove it out that we're not blowing smoke and we built something special for Office, um, we've got Salesforce as well, and you're gonna see the similar experience. We actually showed this in one of the previous sessions. Again, it's signing you in, it's done. Um, I have to talk about it before we actually run the demo piece because I can't speak fast enough. Uh, it, it is indeed very fast. Um, so I think that's it for the, the demo portion. Um, I'll hand it back to you, Vikas. So let's look, now look at um, how we uh, achieve conditional access for legacy clients. Now, <clears throat> in the case of legacy clients, you can apply conditional access controls such as what network they are coming in from, what device type, OS type, iOS, Android, Windows, etc. they are coming from, the client name, this is important. So you can actually say, I want to enable my acti um, active flow for um, active sync, but I want to disable for Thunderbird or I want to disable for other email clients. You can also apply it for specific set of users. And in the demo, you'll see that you can actually say, I want to disable active flow for everybody except for my C-suite or except for my executive who I want more uh, ways for them to um, get access to the office uh, email. Also, you can do protocol level. So you can say, I want active sync to be whitelisted, but POP3 and IMAP to be not available. Um, you can also provide actions such as allow access or deny access. And so some of the use cases that it solves is, some customers asked, uh, told us that they have a corporate-wide policy that all email access should be two-factor authentication enabled. Now, obviously, the legacy clients cannot support it. So we provide a way to block all access from legacy clients um, for that use case. Or another use case is I want, um, <clears throat> I want to be able to allow email access from uh, my unmanaged devices where I cannot actually manage the active sync or the native email, 
but provide a way for people to still use and access the, the email. So we provide a uh, application called Boxer that can be configured and uh, connect to Office 365 to get email and then remote wipe the email data when the user leaves the company or the device gets jailbroken or out of compliance. So that's another use case which you can solve by saying how you can restrict access to um, um, active sync clients. So let's see to this in action. Um, this is a good scenario where there's no policy, so which means that I'm able to access my native email from any client. In this case, I'm using an Android device. I'm setting up my native email, entering my user ID and password, and getting access. So once I get authenticated, now the native email client is pulling all the emails. So I see that um, email that has gone. Now we are going to block access for all active flow clients. And we are going to go here. We are going to say apply this to all user groups, which means um, all the users in the organization, and then deny access. Once I put this rule, and hit save, you'll see that already existing email client that was authenticated now shows unauthenticated because in the background, the native email client every few minutes is trying to authenticate and the next time it tries to authenticate, it would fail. And if I log out and log back in, I cannot actually set up my email to even get access. So that's one quick way of saying block all legacy clients. Now we will selectively whitelist or allow access from VMware Boxer app, but nowhere else you can use the um, legacy clients to get access to email. So again, we are creating a policy. This time we are selecting the VMware Boxer app and then we are drag dropping it to make sure that we allow first the VMware Boxer and then deny everybody else. Now that the policy is created, if we try to log in, this is from the native email client. You will see that, well, this is the Boxer. So through the Boxer, you get access to the secure email, but from the native email, you still don't have access. Now let's look at the um, mobile email management. So through AirWatch, you can push the email profile down to the devices. And why that's important? Because this way, the end user doesn't have to worry about what, you, what uh, server URL to enter and uh, what protocol to select and things like that. Um, they simply have to enter the password and get access into the native email. So you can use the AWatch mem capability to distribute the email profile to the devices that you, um, you want to be provisioned. And then you can also selectively decide which devices you want to uh, deliver this profile to. So you can actually, using PowerShell commands that's built into the AWatch, you can decide and say that I don't want unmanaged devices or certain devices, even in the managed case, I only want certain devices to get access to the native email. So that's First we saw at the identity layer, you are able to control it. And this is a second layer where on top of it, you can control who can actually get access to the ActiveSync native email. 
So this is an example of where you can manage your email access, uh, whitelist and blacklist. You can also create policies such as, um, um, you know, what you can do with the email. Now, I, in the beginning I told about you can also do DLP through um, Workspace ONE. So what does DLP controls for Office 365 mean? Um, so using the OS MAM settings, mobile application management settings, you can do things like open with controls and remote wipe using um, the generic um, OS MAM. The, and that's powered through AWatch EMM. But for copy paste controls and app level pin passcode, you can use Intune MAM and both work together. So you can have the AirWatch um, EMM plus Intune MAM both working together to provide the comprehensive DLP controls that your organization needs. And this is something that is a feature in preview um, as the APIs that are provided by Microsoft gets GA, this feature will get GA. So we are leveraging the early access APIs provided by Microsoft to provide this comprehensive DLP functionality. Now, you don't have to go to Microsoft console to define these DLP controls. Even the copy paste controls, you can define right from the Workspace ONE AWatch console and have one place of defining what policies you need. Next, let's look at if you have invested in some of the third party products, how does that integrate with Workspace ONE? So we'll start with mobile threat defense vendors, SkyCure, and the same integration works with other MTD vendors like Lookout. But the way it works is SkyCure is continuously monitoring for threats on the mobile device and then making the device non-compliant as it detects threat. Once the device becomes non-compliant, then Workspace ONE picks that uh, information and then blocks access, whether it is for the native email client as you just saw or the modern auth clients, all access is blocked um, based on the device compliance posture. So let's see this in action as well. This is a case where, this is a case where um, there's a SkyCure app that can be auto-provisioned again by AirWatch onto the device, which is all continuously monitoring for threats. In this case, the user um, goes on the airport and tries to connect to a, a malicious Wi-Fi. And as you can see, this malicious Wi-Fi is trying to install a profile onto the device which is caught by SkyCure. So as it detects that something malicious is happening on the device, SkyCure immediately takes action and sends this information to AWatch. So you can see that it says untrusted profile was installed onto the device and it was caught by SkyCure. Now, because this device is at risk now, if we, let me try to fast forward this again. So now if we try to access any application, in this case, we are trying to get into Workspace ONE application itself, you'll see that at the sign in time to get into the Workspace ONE, the access is denied. So we right away block access into Workspace ONE, but it could be any other native app as well. Another integration point is with um, IGA vendor like SailPoint, um, which provides identity governance and administration. So there's several use cases that SailPoint provides, right from HR-driven provisioning from HR system like Workday, PeopleSoft, or other HR systems to 
get the user onboarded, get their identity into Active Directory, and then user account creation into target applications where you need access. But also provides the governance capability so you can do trigger things like access request flows. But the whole idea is that at the end, when a user opens their Workspace ONE application, they already see the stuff that they're entitled to. They don't have to worry about, you know, um, creating tickets to get access, their, their accounts into different applications. All of it has, is already um, provisioned by SailPoint. Next, let's look at if you are in the journey of Office 365 deployment, how Workspace ONE can help you with a phased approach. So <clears throat> first is the deployment of Office 365 requires careful planning all the way from migrating your um, users to use Office 365 from a line of business perspective. You want to start with one set of users, pick a department, and then slowly expand it to the whole organization. Also, find out what kind of devices this uh, population of users are using. So start small. Pick a set of users who are using a, one set of devices, one set of platforms, and um, one set of mail clients so that you get some early success and then start to create additional complexity. So <clears throat> in this phased approach, you can start with um, a coexistence model where you have, let's say, some organizations have up to 15 mailboxes of exchange that they need to migrate to the cloud. And they cannot do that in one shot. So they try to do it in a phased manner, migrate five mailboxes to the cloud, then the next five and things like that. And in some cases, they might not be able to migrate all the mailboxes because maybe the legal department mailbox will never ever leave the on-prem exchange to exchange online. So with AirWatch, you can actually decide how you want to migrate your mailboxes and then get the um, ES profiles down to the devices swapped. So remove the old one and automatically push the new one that maps to the Office 365. Okay, then ensuring, so in the beginning, you may want to open up access to even VYO unmanaged devices, but then making sure that you take them into the journey of getting these devices enrolled so that the native email can be remote wiped when the devices go out of compliance or the user leaves the company. So we can help with that. And then finally, increasing the app adoption. Once the email is, um, is set for all the users, how do you drive adoption for Skype for Business, for SharePoint, for OneDrive, all the other 26 or so applications that Office 365 brings, you can measure that, how people are downloading it through the Workspace ONE catalog and then measure the ROI of it. So this is an example of how you can assign, using the uh, AWOT smart groups, how you can assign certain smart groups to provision a certain um, active sync profile. Finally, you um, get dashboard and reporting around through this journey, you want to continuously measure how many users are using Office 365 and how many applications are getting downloaded, what platforms people are using to access the different uh, types of clients. So you get this dashboard and reporting. You can also obviously access from Office 365 console, but then from here you also get another view that you can leverage. Okay. And then, you know, for your Android users, you can also leverage the remote support capability. So 
Um, if your Android user is having difficulty getting access into email or um, some other application of Office 365, then you can use the remote support capability that comes with Workspace ONE AI Watch. So with that, um, we have uh, five minutes for Q and A. If you have questions, feel free. It's a small group, so um, speak out. So question is, if you set up WS Federation link between Office 365 and Workspace ONE, does it work for all use cases or it only works for mobile? So it works for all use cases because once you have set up that federation, then all authentication requests that come to Office 365, when you enter the email address in the Office 365 dialog, Office 365 then redirects it to an IDP. So we become the IDP for Office 365 when the WS Federation is set up. So Azure AD is nothing but a directory in, uh, that's powering Office 365 users. And um, you, how you get an account in Office 365, as I mentioned, you can use products like SailPoint, but you can also use tools like Microsoft tools like AD Connect to synchronize your identities from on-prem AD to Office 365. So there are a couple of options here. Yes. Right, so question is, um, with Office, if I'm going to the journey of Office 365, and if I'm going to use Workspace ONE, do I still have to use ADFL? So the answer is no, because all the capability that you would be using ADFS for, WS Federation, et cetera, is available in Workspace ONE. So you don't have to use ADFS anymore to get ex to get access into Exchange and other things. Yes, so question is, does Workspace ONE support Kerberos-based um, automatic single sign-on onto domain joint Windows devices? So yes, we also support that, so that when you open the Internet Explorer, go to a either the Workspace ONE portal or Outlook Web Access, you're not even prompted for password. It's worth mentioning as well that the whole product suite is available both on-premise and in the cloud and as a dedicated cloud instance. Um, so basically, you know, all the functionality we've talked about for internal applications, for public, for both protocols, uh, for IWA, that's all available in every single one of those models. But what it does come down to is if you feel more comfortable having an on-premises implementation of identity, that is available and it works exactly the same way. Yeah, so question is, is Workspace ONE a module add-on or what is it um, in relationship to AirWatch? So think about Workspace ONE as a new branding of AirWatch. So AirWatch was, um, performing the enterprise mobility management. Workspace ONE is also doing the EMM, but doing more than that by providing app access as well. So if you are an existing AWATCH customer, then you can work with sales to find, can I get all the functionality and what it would it take to get Workspace ONE? So it contains the entire AWATCH functionality, but also more. So if you have, the question is, if I'm already using Mobile Iron, can I use Workspace ONE? So you can use Workspace ONE for non-EMM needs, 
but then some of the tighter integration we have done to provide things like device compliance check, you cannot get. So in order to get the device compliance posture check, you have to use our EMM as well. But you can get the workspace one experience of unified catalog and be able to launch um, applications and provide mobile single sign-on. The other major thing to note is the mobile single sign-on that we looked at um, is either much harder or in some cases not possible to implement with um, another EMM. Um, what we've done in most cases is we not only built the device level, operating system level mechanics to inject that flow generically into apps, um, but for each platform we built a very specialized adapter in the identity component and only by those two communicating are we able to achieve that flow and that's why you've probably not seen a, an SDK-less flow anywhere else. Um, on iOS there is a path forward, um, on Android there is not. So it's a longer conversation but keep in mind that when you look at the mobility side, um, some of the convenience is going to be impacted as well. But Workspace ONE does still have a pretty broad feature set that you're going to be able to use on any device. Yeah, so question is, um, in the SkyCure demo where we showed the mobile threat defense interoperability with Workspace ONE, can you prevent the installation of the malicious profile itself rather than after the installation detecting it and then blocking access? So because the operating system does not um, provide those hooks, as an end user, I can do whatever I want to do, I can download an unapproved app. So, but after that, the detection piece comes in, which is using SkyCure, you can do things like threat defense detection and then take action. Using the built-in AWATCH functionality, you can also find if you have some blacklisted apps that a user has downloaded on the device, immediately make the device non-compliant and also send an SMS, send an email to the user saying that by the way, now you cannot access applications from the device because your device is non-compliant. Remove these apps and then your access is um, uh, back again. Okay, yes. So question is, I already have my, um, all my users are already on Office 365. What are the next steps to use Workspace ONE? So, that's right. So Workspace ONE is a comprehensive set of tools that helps you secure and manage your Office 365 deployment. So if you already have it, you can enhance the security of your Office 365 by introducing Workspace ONE. So, for example, adding conditional access controls. Yeah, so um, why don't we, after this one, better understand the question? As I understand what you're saying is, if I already have my users on Office 365, how do I start to leverage the controls provided by Workspace ONE? The first step would be to, you know, get them federated with Workspace ONE if they are already not, if it's federated with ADFS, so that can be switched to uh, Workspace ONE, that's the first step. The second is to look at um, if your devices are already being managed by AWATCH, and if not, do you have a policy to say, access is only allowed from managed devices and from unmanaged BYO, what level of access can I grant? So those are the kind of things, it depends on what is your policies and how you want to map it to the functionality. Yes.
Yeah, so the DLP I showed, were, there were two parts to it. One is things that we can directly do, remote wipe of the application itself. But there are things that Microsoft has not opened up for their own applications, like pin code control or copy-paste screenshot control. So those things, we are leveraging the management API of Microsoft to define those policies, but the execution of those policies happen in the um, Office 360 or Intune MAM. But it can work together. The key thing is, it's not that if you have Intune MAM, you cannot use AWOT PMM. Both of them work together. Yeah, so question is, if I have other DLP to do whatever it has capability to do, um, can I leverage it? Absolutely, you can do it. Um, we don't have the management interface for other DLPs. So if you need one place to do some DLP management, specifically for Office 365 apps, then uh, we have built that into it. Well, thank you everyone. I know uh, uh, there's only three minutes left for the keynote, so enjoy your day and uh, the party, the block party in the evening. Thank you.